all the mass protests uh, taking place at the moment, uh, quite unexpected, many people will say. I'm showing you on the screen now some of the front pages of the UK newspapers this morning. Um, many of these protesters, by the way, calling for President Xi Jinping um, to resign. This whole um, zero COVID, I call it a nonsense because I think it is. I think it's like you're trying to catch the wind in your hands and stop it. It's not going to happen. Where do you think... In fact, actually, let me start. Let me just rewind. The UK, should we have... You can tell I've been on holday can you, everyone? I'm in holiday mode still. I'm just doing whatever I want. Um, sorry to my director. Uh, the UK... I personally think there's so many uh, abuses now of human rights going on in China. Should we be getting involved in interfering or not? Well, it's a really good question. And it's not just because of what's happening in China that our minds are being focused. It's because of what's happening in Qatar, the fact that the World Cup is being held there. And I made some comments the other day about the Saudi king. I think he was suggesting there would be a, 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 a day's national holiday because Saudi Arabia beat Argentina. I said, how, how about stepping aside and facilitating democracy. And I then got a big backlash, perhaps unsurprisingly, from a lot of Saudis on Twitter saying, stick your noses out of our country and then posting examples of our own abuses of human rights. And as they would see it, the abuse of Iraq because we invaded in rights. So it's, a, it's a real minefield. On China, China calls itself the People's Republic of China. It's no such thing. It's an autocracy. I'd call it a dictatorship. Xi Jinping is a very bad man. And what they are doing to people in China habitually are very bad things. And as someone who supported, because I thought at the time that's what the science supported, someone who supported lockdowns here in this country, for me what they're doing in China is going way beyond that. It, it's believed that some people died in a fire in one of those provinces in China because they were locked into their homes from the outside. And that is absolutely disgusting. So should we as a country get involved... We heard our Foreign Secretary James Cleverly just there say that the world should take notice. He was quite measured in his language. The difficulty for us is that, A, lecturing other people on COVID responses is tricky because of our own COVID responses. But, B, we have, I just looked it up, £90 billion of trade basically every year, including imports and exports with China. So if we're going to do business with them, should we be lecturing them? Well, indeed, that is a million-dollar question. Should we, you tell me at home, should we be lecturing them, involving ourselves in their business or not? Where do you stand on it? Yeah, well, I think it's an interesting question, and the conflict is between how far do we defend and urge other countries to defend universal human rights and how far do we respect other countries' right to national self-determination? And I think in this case, clearly, um, the universal human rights of the people being imprisoned in their homes in China in pursuit of a policy we know doesn't work clearly trumps China's right to national self-determination and James Cleverly should be speaking out and should be highlighting these human rights abuses in China along with all the other human rights abuses in China. But I think the really interesting thing here um, uh, is that zero COVID, which is the policy that President Xi has been pursuing relentlessly in China in a way which we weren't able to hear, but some members of our government wanted to, like mm. Jeremy Hunt, and he should have to answer questions about that, I think, given we've seen how appalling um, uh, people are treated in pursuit of this uh, fairy land goal of zero COVID. But it's clear that it doesn't work. And if zero COVID, if locking people in their homes in the most draconian way, boarding people up in their homes, having policemen deliver meagre supplies to them until they become free of the disease, even if they're just suspected of having it without having tested positive, if that doesn't work, it sends a pretty clear message to the rest of the world that ordinary lockdown policies don't work either. But if zero COVID doesn't work, what hope do less draconian lockdown policies have of working? Okay. So I think we should tell China, your policy is not working. You should abandon it. If it did work, it wouldn't have the largest outbreak in its history right now, but those with 40,000 people look, tested I, positive in the past. I, I, it's very interesting what you say, Toby, because I, I'm absolutely against literally locking people in their homes. And I, I was obviously very... But where's your line there? So it's a really interesting question, because Toby says that lockdowns we now know don't work. Well, I'm not advocating the sort of lockdown that's going on in China, where you are literally locked into your homes, and people have not left their homes for 100 days. It's disgusting, right? And, and it's emblematic of the sort of regime that I've already described China as being. Do we know that lockdowns in this country didn't work at all? We know that they didn't completely suppress the virus. Absolutely. Most of us have got it at one point or another. I had it and so forth. 
But do we know that they didn't help a little bit when the health surface was, could have been on its knees? I'm not sure we know that. And should we know that? Should we look into that? We don't, don't necessarily need a public inquiry because that could be a huge expense. We do but need should a we, inquiry. should we investigate it? So well, next time there's a pandemic, yeah. we, we are acting in, in the best possible way for all of us. Well, lots of people are investigating it, and there have been plenty of research studies done by scientists, economists and others um, suggesting that the policy is largely ineffective. And we have the evidence that, you know, Sweden, which didn't lock down at all in 2020, now has a lower number of excess deaths than Different other European countries which did lock down. Different circumstances. True of Florida, true of oranges Nicaragua. And, oranges and enough. limes. But, but I, think, I, think, I think that the failure of the zero COVID policy to prevent infection in China is yet more evidence that the lockdown policy is largely ineffective. Because if it's ineffective when imposed that extremely, how can we think that well, it's effective it's, if it's opposed in a less strict... Except in less China, strict except, and this I think is an important point, because I'm being absolutely clear, I'm not advocating what they are doing to people in China. Absolutely not. So the, However, is it saying... working though, Michelle? Is it working? They've well, had far we... fewer deaths, have they not, than in lots cool. of other countries. Are you telling me? I mean, I think their official uh, death registers is about 5,000 deaths or not something Not saying we like should that. believe I it, mean, cool but if it's wrong. true, if it is, if, Michelle, if it cool is true, wrong. then you could argue, at least, if, at least intellectually or philosophically, on one level, it is working. The reason it doesn't work, to my mind, is because you can't live life like that. You can't simply lock cities down for hundreds of days well, because it's barbaric. I think people have lost their marbles when it comes to this whole COVID situation, and they've become so silo focused in on how do you prevent the spread of COVID and in doing so they've completely overlooked pretty much anything else all of the unintended consequences I accept that if you want to lock people down most of the time you might think you're doing the right thing I might dispute it but you probably do it with good intentions but if you look at everything that goes on and around the damage the impact that you are doing on people's mental health uh, their ability to go and provide for their family their education their physical health it's absurd that people zero in just on preventing COVID. It's, it's not but Michelle it's, it's important and I know we're rehashing some of the old arguments and that's why I say we should be we should be properly investigating this and I think Toby agrees with me on that. It wasn't simply about avoiding people getting COVID because COVID was seen as some particularly awful disease. In this country, the policy, to my mind, was very clear. It was about ensuring that our health service did not collapse under the weight of COVID infections. But did we get that right? I don't know because I'm not researching it, but we do need to find the answer. It is but, collapsing but, now. People, You're right. People, it people is. predicted in Sweden COVID lockdown zealots predicted that if they didn't impose a lockdown in 2020, the Swedish health service would be overwhelmed. Similarly in Florida, when Ron DeSantis, as the governor, lifted restrictions in the summer of 2020, widespread predictions amongst the lockdown enthusiasts that soon the Florida health service would be completely overwhelmed. It wasn't overwhelmed in Sweden. It wasn't overwhelmed in Florida. So I think that argument that the NHS was at risk of being overwhelmed if we didn't lock down in March 2020... And, really and although water. Britain, as I said earlier, is different from Sweden, and I'm sure it's different in lots of ways to Florida, that on the face of it is, suggests that there is evidence that maybe lockdowns are not necessary. And that's why as someone who called for lockdowns, along with a lot of other people who felt that we were going along with science, and remember policy was being made on the hoof in what was actually a national emergency, that's why I now am honest enough to hold my hands up and say, I don't know still whether or not they were the right policy.